Senator Oji Sokalu at the Southeast to forget the presidency in 2023. And INET National Chairman explains the reasons behind the high rate of voter apathy in Nigeria. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeinde. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. As agitations for 2023 Southeast Presidency continue, Senator Oji Uzokalu says the people of the region that they should forget restructuring of the country and the quest for the presidency in 2023. The former governor of Abia State had accused Oanez Indigbo, the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, for allegedly rejecting his proposal to work for the emergence of a president of Igbo extraction. He claimed that instead of supporting him, the Igbo Association kept wasting its energy on restructuring. Joining us to look at this perspective is uh, Barrister Fred Nzako, who definitely is a legal practitioner. And tonight, I can see that uh, he's giving us a new look. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Kade, and uh, good evening to our uh, dear viewers. Uh, it's not a new look, but say, it's okay. a reflection of, of who I, I really am. I am a, a chief and a crown prince okay. of Igbo land. I am the Abokutenze of Abaga. Thank you. And by extension, the Igwe of Lagos. Thank you. So Thank you. It's not, a, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing. Thank you for that uh, bit of information. But let's get to the topic of today. Now, we see yeah. a kind of twist to the debate we've been listening to all this while, where it seems to be that the Igbos are very, very united in their call. But do you think this is more of a personal opinion or is the truth that must be swallowed by the people from the Southeast? You mean the statement by Ojo Zokalo? Yes. I think it is not only a personal opinion, it is a debased, very, very debased opinion. An opinion that is born out of uh, very shallow thinking and a very shallow um, sentimentalism. Because if other people of other ethnic nationalities in Nigeria are asking that the Igbo nation be allowed or be, be supported and cooperated with to produce a, a sound president of Nigeria of Igbo extraction, it now tells you that if a son of Igbo land, like, uh, and a high ranking one for that matter, like Chief Dr. Oju Zokano, to begin to say that the Igbo should forget the Igbo presidency, it simply means that he, he is making not only a personal opinion, but an opinion that is essentially not well, well thought out. And it is an opinion that will, that will bring opprobrium to his personality as a former governor of, um, of a, a state in Igbo land and as a, a, a ranking senator, being the deputy chief whip of the Senate, uh, who is on the, on the, on the, in the red chambers have, with the votes of the people of uh, his central zone in Abia state of southeastern Nigeria. I think it is an expression and an opinion that should not be taken with a pinch of salt by all women in Nigerians. Because uh, every woman in Nigeria has asked that we should bring in fairness and equity and inclusion okay. in our political affairs in Nigeria. But, and uh, but it's a friend. Uh, uh, everybody has joined that voice to say that it does not harm Nigeria okay, but it's a in friend. any way. I think your point is clear on your opening statement. But let's look at um, the merit of what he said. And uh, let's see whether you can still continue to fault it. 
Now, some of the things he alluded to had to do with uh, the position of our knees in Digbo in, 20, I mean, in the 2019, where it was more about let's look at uh, restructuring, that if we have a restructured Nigeria, zoning will have no place. If we have a restructured Nigeria where power is devolved to different regions, to different states, this issue of marginalization may be a thing of the past. Don't you think what he was telling them is, while restructuring debate is on the table, it is time for you to push your presidency. And if I recall, his anger is that the Southeast were very, in quotes, united in supporting the PDP candidate who is from the North. Don't you think that this is a case where you should consider as Igbos are pushing for 2023? Incapacitating and uh, discrediting his assertion. Recall that in 2000 and in, in, in 1999, the Southwest supported and voted massively for Alliance for Democracy. In 2003, the PDP made an inroad in the Southwest. In 2007, the Southwest regained their beat through the uh, action, action Congress. In 2011, it, con it, con it continued. It did not stop the Southwest from clinching the vice presidency of, uh, of, of Nigeria in 2015. So the fact that the Southeast supported PDP, which of course you know that PDP has its very strong hold in the Southeast since 1998. As a matter of fact, the father of PDP, uh, Chief Dr. Alex Ekwema of blessed memory, uh, is, uh, was a, a Southeasterner. And he wanted to lead Nigeria, but uh, was not allowed, uh, or would I say, that destiny did not shine on his side to lead Nigeria because the military scuttled that idea in 1998-99. But all that has gone into history. It does not mean that if a, a, a section of the country has a, a different political opinion, that that section will not be allowed to produce the president of uh, Nigeria. As a matter of fact, it does not also mean that because the Southeast voted for PDP, essentially in, 19, in 2019. Don't forget that the records of APC, the achievements and the votes garnered by President Buhari in 2019 was over one, 200 or 300 percent above his achievement in Southeast in 2015. As a matter of fact, the votes he gathered in 2019 was more than two, 300 percent over and above what he gathered in South in 2015. So essentially, more people embraced APC in 2019 than in 2015. But that does not mean that it is only APC that will produce the president of Nigeria in 2023. Okay. But any other, uh, any other party can do so. Essentially, PDP is gearing towards taking power back from APC. But let us rest it on this note that take partisanship outside this. We are talking about inclusiveness. We are talking about equity, fairness, and justice. We are talking about the cry of marginalization. We are talking about the seeming state orchestrated exclusivity against the people of the Southeast from sitting on the power of the highest position in the land, which is the seat of the presidency. No region in Nigeria, no ethnic nationality in Nigeria has achieved such feat without the cooperation and support of others. And the Southeast and the Igbos essentially are not saying that they can do it alone. And that is why the Igbos are asking for support. They are asking for understanding. They are asking for, 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 okay, for, Mr. for Fred. them to be allowed Mr. to Fred. throw up. Mr. Fred, why, why, why will we look at that? Uh, I, I, you said we should stay with the issue of uh, statemanship. We should look at uh, a bigger picture rather than partisanship. But I, I'll come back to the issue of partisanship. Let me move along with you. And I recall that the last time you appeared on this program, uh, you were pitted probably against another person who believed that. What about the performance in terms of... Um, 
uh, 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 whoever is in the office, irrespective of who is in the office, don't you think what the people should be mindful of is how it translates to day-to-day -day activity in their lives rather than one man who is in the office and all he remembers might just be his immediate family or some of his cronies who may not necessarily even be from the Southeast. Have you considered that rather than the sense of inclusiveness that you're pushing? Today, the Northwest has a, a president of Nigeria from their own zone. Has, have all the problems of Northwest been solved? The answer is no. There is no president that will solve all the problems of his people because he is not the president of his zone. He is the president of Nigeria. But the people feel a sense of inclusiveness. A man trekked from, from Guzo to Abuja in 2015 <laughs> in jubilation for the election of President Muhammad Buhari. Today, I hear that the man is in problem, in pains with his legs, and needed an assistance. And he has been the granted. The trekking did not cause his pain, but the trekking has not brought him any personal, any personal benefit. What am I saying, and what do I mean? What I mean is that even today, the man is happy that somebody from his own zone is now the president. Asking that a president come from Igbo land or from Southeast does not mean that the president will be the president of the Southeast. He'll be the president of Nigeria. But the Southeast would have felt uh, the, the conspiracy theory that there is intentional uh, 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 plan by the owners of Nigeria, in quote, in quote, not to allow an Igbo man or somebody of Southeast expression to become the president of Nigeria. Such theory would have been solved. So it does not mean that once the president comes from Southeast, then all our problems will be over. But we will have a sense of belonging. The, the three R, the reconstruction, the reintegration, and uh, the, 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 the other R after the war would have been given meaning. Because you cannot say that the U.S. are reintegrated into Nigeria when the rest of Nigerians gang up against them never to lead, never to have a, a son or daughter. Okay. Mr. Fred, I, I want to believe that uh, when you mean conspiracy, when you refer to gang up, now we are staying with a voice from the Southeast. And like, according to you, using your word, a well-respected Southeasterner in person of Senator Uj Uzo Kalu. Now, are we looking at this statement as a voice of dissent? or a voice of, if it is not me, it would not be somebody else. That seems to be the accusation against the Southeast, that it is about, it has to be me or nobody else. Whether it is a case of, it is either me or nobody else, right? Nobody from the Southeast will lay claim to such level of aggrandizement. Because what you are asking for, we have not started talking about who would that person be. We are asking for support and cooperation from other ethnic nationalities in Nigeria, both the major ones and the minor ones, from all the other five geopolitical zones in Nigeria that make up this polity. That let for once give support and cooperation to somebody from the southeast or from Igbo land to lead Nigeria at the level of the presidency. Meanwhile, that does not mean that all positions in the presidency or in the, at the federal level will be occupied by the people of the zone. Of course, you know how it goes, that every state, every zone will say have their own stake and their own share. But what is important is that at least let us shame the devil <laughs> and shame those theorists who believe that the Igbos are, are schemed out perpetually and permanently out of leadership of Nigeria. And then give them the chance to prove their metal. They say, the Igbo say, and the others believe that they have the magic wand in business and the economic management. Give them that opportunity and let them turn Nigeria around, especially at this time when the economy is at its lowest level. When the business of Nigeria is at its lowest level and when the challenges of leadership is so high, give them a chance.
try them for once and see whether they will meet up your expectation or whether they will disappoint you. Nigeria is a country that has perpetuity. And uh, eight years will not kill Nigeria mm. if a Nigeria is led mm. by somebody from Southeast or, some, or somebody who is of Igbo stock. So I do not think that it is too much to ask. Okay, good. Let's, let's look at, uh, because we are still, uh, 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 we are building all our points from the statement um, made by Senator Uzo Kalu. Now, looking at the word restructuring and his hunger was born out of that insistence by the Ohanese saying that restructuring is the way forward and stop this issue of zoning and not zoning. Maybe that's not the exact word. So I'm asking this question. Let's even look at that word restructuring. What do the Igbos stand to gain from resource control and other highlights of restructuring like fiscal federalism and some devolution of powers when we have more powers to the federating units? What do the Igbos stand to gain? Because we understand that Igbos are everywhere. They do business everywhere. They make things happen everywhere. Why this, you know, uh, why this uh, push to control gonna, resources? Those who are those who are asking for restructuring, which include, of course, Hanese, Afenifere, the Northern Elders Forum, among others, Middlebird Forum, the Pandef, that is uh, 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 the Niger Delta people, and the rest of them are people who mean well for Nigeria. In year 2000, I, I, I delivered a lecture in a master's class at the University of Lagos. And I told that class that Nigeria will never develop with the speed and the expectation of, of, of the international community if we don't restructure Nigeria. Because the structure of Nigeria is pro-consumption and anti-production. And the current structure is pro-consumption and against development, against justice, against unity, and against production. And that is why we are moving from one problem to another. Every decade gets worse. The Nigeria of today is worse than the Nigeria of yesterday. And why is it so? Because the further we go from through fiscal federalism, the worse we experience in our economic development. So every right-thinking Nigerian is on the same page that what we need today is to rearrange the structure and make it more productive and make it more unifying and make it more progressive. That is what the structure is all about. So it is not only the Southeast or the Igbos that are on that page, but with so many other people that I already mentioned. And I can tell you that restructuring will be of immense benefit to all Nigerians and not to any section of Nigeria. Just yesterday, Alaji like Baba Ahmed of Northern Elders Forum said that even the North will benefit the most from restructuring. Because what restructuring will do, it will take away laziness, tardiness, and the lack of, of, of uh, 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 focus. It will make the people to be focused and ensure that the resources of each region is optimally harnessed, reduce wastages, and ensure progress and development okay, across good. the length and breadth of Nigeria. Collectively, at the end of the day, Nigeria will now become better for it. Okay, I Mr. do not think Mr. there Fred, is any... Mr. Ziako, I'm not trying to patronize you. I know you are not one of those uh, ethnic champions, and uh, you're giving us a, a bigger picture. But let me try and cage you, if that is the right word, for the purpose of my question. I am saying that in practical terms, what would the Igbos gain when we restructure Nigeria? Some would say that, what is even wrong with the current structure? So I'm looking at what do we need to restructure that will make the Southeast more buoyant than they have, they are, if at all they are. I have told you that the whole Nigerians will gain no, from I, I, restructuring. I've told Southeast you so. Now. All the zones, all the tribes will gain robustly from restructuring. But since you want to, to my, micro-investigate <laughs> the gains from the Igbos and the Southeast, whatever the gain they make is the same gain that the people of Southwest will make, Northeast 
North Central, South South, and, and let me North West. Explain. Let me, let me give Mr. you Fred. a few of the gains. One, there yeah. will be optimal management and utilization of resources. That is one. Two, there will be incentive for productivity. Three, there will be more unity in Nigeria because no group, no zone would seem to load it over another zone. So the mutual suspicion that we have today, which permeates into our political undertakings and our policies and actions in the polity would have been solved because there will be mutual respect on account of the fact that you are in your own zone doing your own thing and I'm in my own zone doing my own thing. We meet at the center, you bring what you have achieved, I bring what I have achieved, we put it at the central port, everybody will be happy. This issue of the, the lopsidedness in local government and state creation would have been cured. Today, there are 44 local governments in Kano State alone, and there are 27 local governments in Jigawa State. Meanwhile, Jigawa and Kano were states created out of the old Kano. Lagos State, with its huge population, has only 20 local government areas. The 37 LCDAs created was said to be inquit and not recognized by the Constitution. Okay. Today, when you share revenue allocation to local government, Kano will get more than double of what goes to Lagos and three times of what goes to some other, 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 other state. With restructuring, if Lagos likes or the Southwest likes, let them have 100 local government. It does not hurt anybody. Mm. If not West likes, let them have 500 local government. It does not hurt anybody. What you get is what you will use. Because we would have taken away this issue of going to Abuja to share money. Then we will now go to our various zones, produce what we have, using our skills and our resources, and bring the agreed percentages to Abuja. So, Kaide, so many ills will be healed. Okay. So many challenges will be cured. The Southeast has five states today, whereas the Northwest has seven states. Okay. That is the love side Thank you that's so much, Fred. We are talking about. Thank you so much, And that Fred. is not good for the politics. I just want to put on record that uh, I'm not trying to micro-investigate <laughs> you. I was only trying to put some of those arguments out there where some people felt the way out is not even restructuring. We've heard things like uh, secession. We've heard things like uh, let's divide. We've heard things like that. But with your explanations, trust me, I think there could be a change of heart from some of these champions. Thank you so much, Fred and Zako. I wish we have more time to continue to, using your word, micro-investigate you on this issue. Thank you for your time. Many thanks, Kaede. Eh? Glad to be here with you. Yeah. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, INEC National Chairman, that's the immediate National Chairman, says why fewer Nigerians have failed to vote. We'll find out when we come back after the short break.